Thanks for staying with us. Doing Business 2020 found that Nigeria is amongst the 10 economies that have improved the most in their ease of doing business score. Nigeria, now ranked 131, has been recognized for making enforcing contracts easier by enhancing the quality of judicial processes. As PEBEC, the Presidential Enabling Business Environmental Council, continues to focus on strategies and initiatives to improve Nigeria's ranking, is the average Nigerian SME experiencing the impact of these reforms positively? We're joined by Helen Amore. Helen is currently the CEO of Scientia Consult, a business and project development consultancy based in Lagos and co-founder of Anti-Helen Foods. Helen has worked on several programs and projects, especially in developing business along the agribusiness value chain, infrastructure development, manufacturing, not-for-profits and the public sector. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet to us at Plus TV Africa, always show Africa One with the hashtag ways or SMS 0818-038-4663. Thank you so much, Helen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay. So I'll let Nikki take the first question. Okay. So we've heard so much about diversification. The government comes on telling us the story that we already know. Everyone, we're too dependent on oil. Our saving grace is agri agriculture. Please can you enlighten us on what are the real policies affecting agriculture? Okay, so thank you for having me again. In Nigeria, a lot has happened in the past, let's say, 40 years. I grew up hearing Operation Feed the Nation. Mm. Yes. That was in the 70s, during yes. the first reign Obasanjo. of uh, President Obasanjo. Yes. Then he was head of state. And then we had all sorts of, there was Food for All by year 2000. And then we had Vision 2020. So the, the, there's never been a shortage of policies. Uh, but the challenge here is there's a disconnect between the policy makers mm -hmm. and the operators of the policy. So the, you make a policy as a government, but it's the people who are going to implement yeah, it. Obviously. So how do you make a policy and you don't give me the tools to so operate well? So farmers, most of Nigerian farmers are still subsistence farmers. Mm -hmm. They have little or no access to credit, which is very important for business to grow. I don't even want to begin to talk about species, uh, seed quality, extension services. In Nigeria now, it's almost non-existent. Wow. And where you have it is provided by people such as Babangona wow. and Sahel and a couple of other um, agribusiness focused capital companies. So there is a wide gap. But the good thing is there's a lot of awareness, there's a lot of sensitization, and I see that there's a deliberate attempt to promote it. But I have a very contrary view to the talk about agriculture. Everybody's talking about agriculture, they're focused on farming, 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 farming. But what happens during harvest? Mm -hmm. A lot of waste, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. a lot of waste. And like um, your guest said earlier on, there are too many inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. So you need to make people like so fresh comfortable. Yeah. Get so so that we can get off takers. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to have more people in the production sec so the segment. So the entire value chain is skewed. Okay. So that, I mean, if we become more focused on value addition, then the true value of agriculture will be unlocked. But if we say agri and it's about farming, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, so let me just come in here. So we hear a lot of funds set up. So, for example, the MSME DF. And the government tells us we've supplied, we've given inputs to people in Kaduna, to people in Kanu. Is that all audio? What is really happening? Are they not providing the inputs? And can people not assess these funds that they put in BOI, that they put in the central bank and layers with banks? What's the disconnect? Because they seem to have provided. OK, again. Um, <laughs> I say this with us, uh, every sense of respect. Most of the people making policies for us as a nation have never run a business before. So you sit down, you get a group of people together, they see what they've done in China, they see what they've done in the West, mm. and then you begin to formulate a policy in Nigeria that is not connected to the people who the policy is made for. So we need more engagement with MSMEs. I think that's what has happened with the finance law that we have now, the one that was passed by the president earlier this year. You can see that there was some thinking behind that law. 
For instance, SMEs who earn less than 25 million yeah, don't have, have to pay VAT, you yes. don't have to pay taxes until you cross 25 million. So I have an incentive to grow my business. By the time I'm crossing 25 million, I have an Cost incentive to grow to 100 yes. after that. So it's the same thing with the agri sector. We need to have a holistic strategy towards dealing with growing that sector. But what I see is there's a lot of talk, you know, but without being entirely pessimistic, I would say that the talk is leading somewhere. At least more people are going to the farm. And I'm happy that a lot of people who have rushed to buy lands and planted crops now realize that, oh, I shouldn't have done this in the first place, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because, hey, at your level, at my level, at your level, at everybody's, all of us in this room, we shouldn't be on the soil. Yeah. You should be on the value addition ladder. That's where we are all going to go now, because we now realize that, okay, when you finish producing these things, what, what, what the are you going to do stage? with it? Yes. Who are your off takers? Exactly. How many manufacturing concerns do we have okay. in Nigeria? If I may, if I may step in, yes. how well are the um, populace, is the populace actually, um, is there some sort of awareness to say, okay, um, we have this policy that has been put in place by the government. Okay, this is what we as an SME, we come together as a body to represent the SMEs and say, okay, government, this is not going to work for us. Are we going to, what are we going to do to make it work for us? Is there a body like that that interacts with the government? Okay, so there are different bodies yes. that, different interest groups oh. that interact with government. But I think the major challenge for us is lack of knowledge. There isn't enough information about how things are done. How do you add value? How do you go from being an employee or being just somebody who has maybe one million to invest mm -hmm. to becoming an investor in a small factory mm -hmm. that processes a crop? How do you do that? A lot of people don't know how to do that. They sometimes think that you have to start big. So you see so fresh today and people are like, ah, oh, when will I ever become like so fresh? Oh, I need a hundred million. No, you don't need a hundred million. You need, so you, you you need a little gap. money you to have start. That gap though, but then for me, what I see is it sounds like the government, their heart is in the right place, but they also don't know what to do. Because if your focus is on agriculture, but you're not thinking through the entire value chain, Process. what exactly is it? Because I, I see and I feel like everybody has now gone into farming and it's you're now coming to that point where there's a lot of waste. There are obviously gaps in the policy. So yeah. where do we need to be looking at? Because I see innovation, mechanized farming in other places. People are building and creating greenhouses where they can build also. Storage so facilities given that farm. we've actually now addressed that agriculture issue, what kind of policy should we be looking for? Because it doesn't even sound like it's it's implementation or it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like we don't even have it. It's not pushing. It's not going in that direction. Okay, so the government has policies, right? Uh, but the government does not implement the policies. They don't operate the policies. It's you and I. So government, there, there are a lot of policies but about exports. Some, some issues that no, the government no, no, I'll, 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 enforces. I'll, I'll come to you. You mm. see, the government has a fund for agri, right? Yes. Mm. Um, Agsmis. There's Nexim. There's Bank of Agriculture, and there's NISRA, yeah. Yeah. right? So there's a, there's a very robust ecosystem mm. around agribusiness now. But what mm. has happened is there are not enough people, right, who understand how they can take advantage of those opportunities. That's one. Two, mm. there's also a lot of negative narrative about Nigeria. Okay. So, you know, there's insecurity, there's infrastructure, there's power, I mean, Power is a major issue. Right. There are bad roads. Yeah. You, you, even issues. when you finish, yes. you, you, you send your driver to go and deliver, the police will arrest him mm. and start asking him questions and papers. I mean, there was a day they took my, my they arrested my driver. And I told my driver, I said, you know what, give them the bus and everything inside. <laughs> I don't care, don't come back. Mm. And my driver said, madam, are you serious? I said, yes, because I'm tired. Up, mm. yeah. I cannot be killing myself and then come and bribe one policeman again mm. you know so there's so many things happening to discourage you from doing business so what do you get people go into trading trading is easy yeah trading appears to be easy it has its own challenges but then it doesn't you don't have to worry about operations first you worry about location your operations your mm. staff your power your raw materials your packaging materials the licenses mm. then regulators multiple regulators in some states in it so there's so many things happening to discourage people from going in but what needs to happen 
in my opinion, is we need more people, more Nigerians to begin to take risks. Mm -hmm. We need more Nigerians to begin to get knowledge on how to do business, where they should be doing business in agribusiness, and how they can enter the space. Because the go no matter how many policies governments brings to play, they are not the ones that will operate it. Mm -hmm. It's the people. Yeah. And then you find foreigners coming into Nigeria to take advantage of the same policies that we are running away from. Yeah. You know, so it's it's not without its challenges, but we have to go in from a position of knowledge. You have to belong to ecosystems. You have to look for support systems that allow you to thrive in that space. So I was just going to say that um, let's come away from the policy. Let's now come to the real life issues. You've touched on something that is very key, which says there's a lack of knowledge. And uh, you have successfully co-founded a processing firm. So can you give us a few pointers if someone is watching this show right now and is thinking, ah, that sounds like an opportunity, I would like to go into it. How can they start? And you know, what, what does it take? Okay, so first thing is going to a business that meets a need mm -hmm. or solves a problem. So your business must have the potential to have customers, right? It shouldn't be a fancy mm. business, if you ask me, when you're starting off. I know there are a lot of people who, are, who want to innovate, they want to create, but that takes time. And if you have to wait for everything to be perfect, you won't do anything. Exactly. Start from where you are. People need to learn to start small. But for you to start, you need to go and get knowledge. You need to do, do things. I've seen people who have gone to do apprenticeships just because they want to start a business under, or understudy somebody. So for me, starting small is number one. Number two, seek knowledge. Seek knowledge, seek knowledge. Be humble enough to say, you know what, before I even start this business, let me spend a year or two understudying somebody who is doing it or look for employment in that space. Don't say because you have maybe five million or 10 million, just put all of it in a business. Point. And then what you find is most people lose because of inexperience, mm -hmm. right? They, they don't have experience, they don't have knowledge. They, mm -hmm. they lose all their money and then they now say, oh, doing business in Nigeria is hard. Please don't get me wrong, doing business in Nigeria <laughs> it has its hard. own challenges. Mm -hmm. It has its own challenges, right? Because in this same environment that you and I are complaining, people I've seen people in the past mm -hmm. four years who started businesses and businesses are growing. Mm -hmm. They're so not where they want to be. It's also a combination they of capacity building yeah. and knowing, knowing that. I want to come back Before to you go on, okay. I just want to quickly take our message. So um, this message comes from Abashuta Ahmad from Elori, and he says, I stand solidly, solidly behind Goke. The government really needs to partner with our SMEs to help create more jobs and help the menace of un unemployment in the country. That's absolutely apt. That's absolutely apt. I was going to touch on wastage and food insecurity. There's both the opposite. Mm. So we're here battling food insecurity, and you're talking about a lot of waste. How do we marry those two? Because obviously, from what you're saying, the problem is not producing the food, but getting serving it to, to the last consumer, getting the food to the last consumer. What do you think? So for example, if President Buhari was sitting here, what would be your advice in tying those two opposite ends together? Okay, so in tying those two opposite ends together, right, there's a time frame for solving this problem. Let's take rice. I'll use rice as an example. Okay. Suddenly, they shut the borders last year, mm -hmm. right, and there was no more rice in Nigeria. Why? Because we hadn't grown enough. But before then, the narrative was that, oh, Nigeria is now sufficient in rice. Mm -hmm. There are rice farmers, but are they producing enough? Mm. Tracking that. So as you, as you are increasing capacity from the production side, you also have to increase capacity from the processing side. So there were processors who had factories and they had no parties to process. Hmm. So there must be an alignment of both the supply and the demand side. That's part of planning. Mm -hmm. It's not just the government that will do it. I'm not making excuses for government, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that for us as a private sector, we also need to begin to look at things more holistically. Mm. Who is doing the work of growing? Like dairy, for instance. Goki talked about banning of milk. They banned milk because they wanted to encourage local production. But, the but you don't, when you're encouraging local production, you don't just kill the operators of that business. So there must be a time 
frame within which you say, you know what, these are the number of herds that we have, and this is the volume of milk they will produce. Therefore, in three years' time, yeah, we would have reduced. Time. You know, there's, there's that planning part of it that we don't have. And that's why I'm saying knowledge is a major challenge. A major the way challenge. we just sit down is like we think, oh, when people say there's agri is the next goal, and I see a lot of people say, I want to go into it. I'm like, it's not like that. <laughs> You don't you go into it like that. What, what's, what's, what's the framework within the which process, you are working? Yeah. There's a process for this. So what's your challenge with um, quality control as an SNE? When you say quality control, you mm. know, I would say quality control is the responsibility of the business owner. Mm. If you own a business, especially when you're in the regulated space, there are clear guidelines that NAFTA provides for you. Because NAVAC regulates food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There are clear guidelines that the standard organization of Nigeria provides. They, they, they also check how you do your, your processes mm -hmm. to ensure that they are up to the international standards. Right? So they have very clear guidelines. But we, as a people, because of the so many challenges that we face, we sometimes tend to short circuit them and want to cut costs. If you are spending almost a million or two million naira on diesel every month. You have to be watching other mm -hmm. costs, and sometimes mm -hmm. people cut corners. So quality for me in Nigeria, I think I'd rather buy a made in Nigeria product. It's very high. Mm -hmm. The regulators are very strict because once they get you falling foul of any of those um, they regulations, they can, they, can, they can shut you down. Mm -hmm. So I think the quality under which made in Nigerian products are produced uh, is very high. It is mm -hmm. very high. You find some people falling off the mark, but it's mm. high. Okay, so I would like to come to the contribution of the private sector. We've admitted that the government cannot do it all, but how do we encourage the private sector to fund agriculture? Here again, it comes back to knowledge. Okay. Um, people can't fund what they don't know. Mm. Uh, a lot of people will not put their money in yeah, a business yeah. that they don't understand. So there was a report sometime last year about how trillions of nairas are tied down. Trillions of capital is tied down in Nigeria on real estate and in bank deposits. Because most people would rather keep their money in a bank than invest it in the business. Mm. So mm. until we have a, a more robust angel network system or private equity system, businesses in Nigeria will not grow. Because the banks cannot lend you money to experiment. It is only private capital that can fund a startup. Yeah. No bank will give you money. The banks should only fund businesses that have cash flow. So if you don't have cash flow, how are you going to pay back the debt? Mm. Right? Yeah. So, Thank you so, so much. I mean, it's, it's enlightening to understand the challenges. I think if we don't have conversations like this, we, we're not able to focus and zone in on those places where the challenge is. So we came into the show thinking agriculture is the answer, thinking production is the problem, and now we're leaving the show knowing that processing Harvesting. is the Capacity place to go. Capacity building, and, and, knowledge. You know, so there's, knowledge. A, there's a lot there to unpack in that conversation. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on the show you. today. Catch us live every weekend from Friday to Sunday at 8 p.m. as we bring thought-provoking, engaging, and informative conversations to your screen. You can also watch a repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays and Sundays at 3 p.m. It's been an insightful conversation. Please keep the conversation going on our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. In case you missed today's quote, here it is. A policy is a temporary creed, liable to be changed. But while it holds good, it has got to be pursued with apostolic zeal. I think that's a very wise, wise quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.